Um, I find it quite surreal that Gary's brought us to this uh, esteemed location, the Steve War Room in the Sydney Cricket Ground to have the Sydney Swans training out there. And up until a minute ago, they were actually playing soccer. So, you know, what's going on here? Um, so as Gary uh, said, I am the general manager of consumer marketing at one of the big four banks, National Australia Bank. Um, that means I have something just under five million customers on my watch. Uh, three million of them and growing are actually engaging with us digitally. And as we uh, orchestrate our ways of communicating, engaging and winning more and deepening the relationship with the customers we've got, absolutely, we are shifting towards now more than 50% of our marketing dollars is spent in the digital marketing space. And quite frankly, 95% of our customer interactions are done in the digital ecosystem. And so I've, I guess that's the credentials I've got with you to uh, share with you today as to why the choice you've made to give up your Friday in a very cold winter day in Sydney to be here and get a little bit more of a lens of what this digital marketing gig is about and very importantly, why it's so important and why it's the place to be. Um, what I wanted to cover today, and I don't do lectern, so I'm going to jump down actually and walk around. This is what uh, John Chambers of Cisco used to do. He used to walk around the room. Um, I'm going to cover three things of you today. One, you, know, you can see I'm probably dragged the average age of this room up by two decades. You know, I'm 50, I've got two, two sons, I'm still married to their dad, yay. <laughs> and I don't want to really admit this, I am actually a grandmother now. Ooh, so it makes me laugh. Anyway, we won't go into that. But so I'm still doing this stuff. And, um, and where I started is very different to where I am now. And so my message for you today is this, you know, three things. This world is changing and it's going to change a lot more. Therefore, you all and I have need to change. And there's some skills that I'm going to encourage you to embrace to make sure you can, in fact, adapt and change. So that's why I talk about pivot or pale into, I couldn't spill in significance and fit it on the slides, so pale into grey. And my message to you today is really, you know, be ready to change. Now, you've all heard this term, I'm sure. Change is the only constant in life. You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know when this, this statement was first coined? It was back in something like 500 BC by this guy called Heraclitus. So this thought that change is constant has been with us forever. I guess for someone who's my vintage, just says, oh, geez, it feels like it's really speeding up because, you know, everything's just getting, you know, changing so much quicker. And I thought I'd do a, a retrospective of, you know, what, where were we 10 years ago? And probably I'm not a very good futurist. Where are we likely to be in 10 years from now? So if we were sitting here, um, you know, and you're, I think most of you are probably still at school, aren't you? You're from kindergarten, primary, whatever. Um, my sons had just started to discover MySpace. Well, that was really cool. We thought it was really, really awesome that Rupert Murdoch spent $350 million for MySpace. He couldn't sell it for $30 million eight years later. You know, stuffed that one, got that one wrong. I am still grieving Borders is not here. I still love my books. I've uh, met the CEO of Dimex. I'm hoping he will do a great job and keep that business alive. We now have a new definition of the Kodak moment. The Kodak moment used to be about capturing the moment, that memory. Now the Kodak moment means you're actually in receivership. Uh, got that wrong. If we polled this room 10 years ago, predominantly, most of you would have had a Nokia phone. Who's got a Nokia? Anyone? Anyone got a Nokia phone? I did ask this question once and someone put their hand up. No? Okay. And um, we were listening to music on CDs and vinyl was dead. Now let's think forward 10 years, 2018, 2028. Okay, Facebook world domination, Zuckerberg is uh, going to survive Congress. We're still going to give him all, the, all our data and be happy with it. WeChat will be huge in its own right. There's like something like six, I think we're up to 600,000 users of WeChat in Australia now. Um, so, you know, get on and start learning Mandarin. Um, cash is gone. You know, we will not have branches that take cash. It's all going to be tap and go, all wearables. <laughs> you happy with that? All on the mobile phone, you're right. Um, prophesize, even now, why are we even swiping a screen? We should just be able to talk to it. And say by 2020, 30% of all, all searches will be done without a screen involved. Drones will deliver our pizza and our shoes. Um, we'll have driverless cars, so that's why I do wonder where we're going to need radio. And I reckon, you know, music on vinyl will actually be back. It's cool because, you know, it's come back now. Why not stick around? But you can, you can get it. Like, this is only 10 years ago, and I'm probably not even being really outlandish enough in terms of what's going to happen in 10 years' time. 
where are you all going to be in 10 years' time? What, what's your uh, 2028 vision going to be? What do you think you're going to be doing? And what kind of executive are you going to be? So get it, there's change ahead. Um, uh, I actually was part of the launch team of Optus, which yes, was 25 years ago. We were really excited when we were getting phones out that looked like that. Um, I love the fact that they got smaller and then they got bigger and now the iPhone X is like humongous. We talk about tablets. But you can see, technology is changing. Now who would live without their mobile phone? The brands are changing. Well, the, not, not more than 2006, the biggest brand, one of the top three brands was Coca-Cola. Now, where's Coca-Cola? It's Google, it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's Facebook. That's in, what, you know, less than five years, how the power of these brands has changed. <clears throat> and what we're also seeing is that the way to start up businesses is becoming much, much cheaper. So once upon a time, if you wanted to leave this room and go, I'm going to do it myself, I am going to be the next entrepreneur, you had to go and find some investor who would give you $5 million for the privilege, because that's what it took to get a business up and running. Now with, the, with software as a service, um, you know, stuff in the cloud, being able to rate software apps, doing things at scale, it's now very easy to have startups. So now we're seeing a proliferation of startups, very much obviously in the US, in Israel, China, and obviously growingly here. And the business models have completely changed. You know, once upon a time you used to, to own the thing that you're actually solving customers' problems with. Now you've got these three entities, you know, biggest taxi company that doesn't own any vehicles, uh, biggest uh, uh, accommodation provider that doesn't actually own a single room or have a single maid or do any cleaning. You know, the business models are changing. And this actually is only in 10 years, right? You know, if you were all here 10 years ago, none of these were anywhere near the entities they are now. So what? Okay, you go, okay, sorry, KG, that's all old news. We're seeing that, we're living that, we're breathing that. I guess my question for you is, well, what's happening for you? How are you planning your evolution, your disruption of yourself so that you keep up and stay relevant? So my hypothesis is to you is as much as I'm in a business, banking, that needs to absolutely look out where our customers are going, follow them fast and make sure we're serving their needs. You as people who want to be executives in a business, run your own business, and you'll also be equally obs obsessive about how I constantly evolve and stay on top of where, where my opportunities and business are going. So I thought I'd share with you my own journey. I actually started life as an electrical engineer. Um, I had a, a bachelor's degree and my first job was on the tools. There you go. I did steal my husband's tools, but you know, I was actually running around buildings with a toolbox installing building monitoring systems so we could turn on the air conditioning and make sure the security was working and you know, making sure all sort of uh, kept everything secure. This is where I started. All right, now I worked out that I didn't really want to stay there for too long because I love the technology. I have to say, I love playing with the toys, but I didn't want to be being told by those sales marketing people what to code. I wanted to do the uh, decision making. So on my own personal journey, I did do further study. I did do a Masters of Business Administration at the same school I'm now teaching. And I had this amazing opportunity to be part of a launch of a startup on steroids. So you can imagine when Optus came to Australia, there was only one telco in the market. Everyone was dying for having some other option because telecom was being awful. And it was here, a clean piece of paper. Tell us what we should, the pricing plan should look like. Tell us what the value proposition should be. Um, and just go nuts and money's no question. Oh, that was like an amazing ride, can you imagine? And you know, obviously they've, they've gone on to, to bigger and better things, um, particularly on the mobile business. Um, so I've now moved from engineering now into marketing in a sort of techie company. I roll forward, um, I have now moved from being a very traditional marketer where when I was launching my Optus mobile services, I was running TV ads, I was putting out a home app, I was sending out direct mail and getting some poor telemarketer to call up the customer, to now when I'm talking into NAB customers or the prospects for NAB, I am doing very large Facebook communications. 50% of those communications are using our data to make sure we talk to our customers in a more appropriate way than talking to prospects. We're orchestrating a system with programmatic buying. We're making sure every asset we put up on our website is discoverable by search. We're making sure it's all available on mobile. You know, this is, you can just see all the tech. And what I love, my latest toy I get to play with, 
the uh, Amazon Echo. You know, you can uh, say, talk to NAB on the Amazon Echo, check your account balances. Well, I've got money, enough money to actually buy those, you know, pair of blue plate suede shoes I'm really interested in. And now this is the way we're actually starting to talk to how we engage with our customers via voice when they can do other things with their hands and whatever, and we are now servicing their needs. So a little bit of a, you can see my own personal evolution moving from this to playing with cool toys like this. So I guess what I wanted to sort of encourage you, some of you have graduated, some of you have got a year or so away. Um, unfortunately, guys, you know, when you get to uh, walk across that stage and you know, move your little morsel board over, that's where it all starts. Certainly, it's not where it stops. You can't say, good, I'm done. Now, pay me the big bucks and give me the corner office. It's not going to quite work that way. And I'm uh, going to draw on some very esteemed people in this category. So uh, Einstein was the one that said, said that education is what remains after you've forgotten what you learned at school. I'm the first one to have jammed for exams, and as soon as I walk out, I've completely forgot what it's all about. But the learning, the insights, the, the way of approach, the thinking is the things that you will need to take on. And quite frankly, in something like digital marketing, probably everything you'll learn at uni today will be completely changed within a year or two years' time. I struggle to keep up as to how much Facebook changes. I struggle to keep up with the new ways we can engage with things like Spotify. I struggle with, up with the new ad units that you can get in things like Snapchat and Instagram. So what you're going to have to learn is you're going to have to keep learning. And so it's about training. It's what you've got to approach this if I'm going to constantly be questioning. I'm going to constantly thinking I'm not done. I've got to constantly find the next way. And that's the exciting, it never gets boring in digital because that's exactly what you've got to do. So now when you graduated, got yourself your really cool first job, now the real fun begins. And I guess what I really wanted to land with you that I talk to my teams about all the time is, is that the four things you really need to do to continue to stay on top of this game. Like digital marketing is super exciting. You never can say you're done. But in order to stay on top of it, and to pivot and not pale into to grey, there's four things you really need to do. Um, so I say read voraciously. You know, don't. Sorry, it's not just the scroll in your uh, your Facebook feed or whatever Snapchat's coming up this week. Actually, go into the industries that you're wanting to be a part of, the disciplines you want to be a part of, and get on top of all the jargon. You know, whether it's Bitcoin, cryptology, uh, programmatic buying, whatever the language is, make sure you're on top of it and find ways to stay on top of it. And even Dr. Zeus, I love Dr. Zeus, he loved Dr. Zeus, even he made the point, the more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. So make sure you give yourself time to continue to educate yourself. Your job of learning is not done. Secondly, um, curiosity did not kill the cat. Curiosity is critical. Constantly ask, like, so the first thing I do, as soon as I knew we were going to be playing with now, the first thing I do is rush out and get one of these things and give it a go and put it in our house. We actually now have a house where we've got a Google Home and an Alexa and Alexa Echo and they're all fighting amongst themselves. It's great to see. But, you know, jump on this stuff. See what it's like. Be an early adopter. Find out if you think there's something in it and that you need to be part of it. Oh, or find out that there's nothing in it and get off it really quickly. So, you know, it's certainly curiosity, asking, looking forward, finding ways. Like when I look at the young stars in my team, it's not the ones who just who take the marching orders from their people leader. It's the ones who do what they're asked to do, but also say, but what about? How about we do it this way? Is this something we could explore? I've read this. I talked to someone who said this is an opportunity. So I guess I give you permission in whatever you do is don't just take what you've been told to do. Be curious, ask why, say is there other ways I could do this? Because absolutely, I'll say in terms of the stars in my team, the ones that are doing that are the ones that we are giving more of the opportunities to and they're rising into that corner office. Um, and look, we always talk about failing fast, I say fail fast, fail small, but try new things and stuff up. It's actually okay because in the stuffing up you learn. Um, so certainly, if you've never made a mistake, then you've never tried anything new. And I'll confess, I've had lots of stuff ups in my life, but from that we learned. I was going to share this one with you. It's quite old, but nevertheless, I got my public um, acrimony from the fact that uh, I was at Telstra at the time, 
And tell Stuart's good at trying this stuff. We were very on the forward edge at the time of social media. And we had our very own place in this thing called Second Life. Do any of you know what Second Life was? A few nods. We even got an article in 60 Minutes at one stage. It was sort of like if you really didn't like your first life, you could go and have a better life in Second Life. And we were all creating our own avatars. And there was whole ecosystems and currencies. And Telstra had an island. We created the Big Pond Island. We actually had a, a Telstra store where you could talk to Telstra people. And, you know, it was quite, we thought we were very cutting edge. It was great for the time. But we got to the point where there were more Telstra staff in Second Life than were actually customers. And that was the point we said, fine, we had to follow our customers in there, and we had to follow our customers out. Now, because I was the one who made the big decision, sorry, good, we're done, shut it down. The three customers that were in Second Life were very angry at me and you know, put me up in. But I guess I use that as an example of something that Telstra gave a go. It had served a purpose for a period of time, but it's also when you go, okay, enough's enough shut it down and that was okay and it was a good thing to do because if we just let it run it would have just been a big distraction and a waste of time. <laughs> and lastly, network and learn from others. Like I will learn from you guys, I hope you're going to learn something from me. Use something like this as a place to find people who you can reach out to, who can give you a perspective on something. You know, the biggest thing you can do in both if you're running your own business or working, in a or working in business or corporate life is have a very, very strong set of people that you can interact with and ask questions of and get a perspective of who will also ask questions of you and get a perspective of you and then get this sort of greater share of learning. So congratulations to you for coming today because I think that's a demonstration that you get that. And I would urge you to continue to do events like this where you will find something. Like I, I you know, there's this great scene in Wall Street, um, Mark II, which said, um, the, the villain said, at every point in my a person's life, they should have a mentor and a mentee. Each of you should be seeking out a mentor. And then when you've got a couple of years on the rank, you should be starting to have a mentee. Because every time you interact with someone, it's a learning exercise. And every time you talk to someone, it's not even in your industry, you can get some nuggets of gold away from it. So every interaction is an opportunity to learn to win if you're open to improving, not proving a point. So open ears, listen more than you talk. So I guess some, and I had to pull this one in because yeah, all, I've given you all these quotes, so I believe they're all sort of valid, why not? Um, what I wanted to say to you is congratulations for coming today. Absolutely, digital marketing is where it's happening. In my 20-something years of being a, a seasoned marketer, I think there's, um, we've still got TV, we've still got out of home. The only channel I've been able to turn off is the fax channel, yay. But digital is where it's growing and where we invest our time and effort and we expect every marketer in our business to have a deep understanding of how to be able to ask the questions and execute in the digital space alongside the more digital media. So congratulations for coming today, but my challenge to you is don't stop. The world is changing. We as executives need to continue to change with it um, and keep up with the fact that it's going to be ever evolving and the only way to stay on top of it is just keep doing it. My, my sort of uh, advice to you all is don't you know, back yourself and be bold. And if you see an opportunity and even if you don't think you've quite all got everything sorted out, go for it because you'll, you'll be able to work it out once you're in the role. Are there any blogs or sites that you keep? Oh, <laughs> where do I start? Um, yeah, heaps. But I guess uh, I've got ones that are from banking. I've got ones that are from um, marketing. I've got ones that are from social media. I can't tell you. I've got um, a whole heap of them. So I would suggest I don't have a single one for me that really lands it all. It's actually skimming across a lot and going deep on the things that I'm, I'm keenly interested in at the time. And right now, certainly probably the hottest topic for me is how you really use artificial intelligence and virtual assistants to give customers a really good experience because that's my bet that that's the way we're going to need to move that scale for our customers. What's the most exciting thing NAB is doing in the marketing at the moment? Well, Good call. I think it's this. I think we're actually starting to really move to uh, Google Assistant. You can use Google Assistant on the, any, uh, any mobile phone, be it Apple or Android. Um, and we've got a really deep relationship with Amazon because you can, in fact, what we call authenticate and going and check your account balance and 
uh, see whether you got paid and see um, you know, what your situation is financially without even sort of touching anything. Uh, my vision certainly is that we'll be able to do that with Google as well uh, across any device and really enable our customers to be on top of their banking and be in control of their banking even beyond having their mobile app for which we're very proud. Uh, how do you think bank <laughs> oh God, that's a good question. How do I think banking will evolve the development of cryptocurrency? I honestly don't know. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's definitely something we've got to look at and um, you know, get on top of, because if that's where our customers are going to start to engage, we need to be there. It's important to try to have a marketing mentor. Um, my view on mentors is pick where you think you need the opportunity for coaching. So do you need coaching in technical skills? Eh? Do you need coaching in marketing disciplines, perhaps, potentially? Do you need coaching in how you engage with difficult stakeholders, um, tell your story, um, make, cha make for change in complex environments? Like, I don't even think it's just get narrowed down to a particular discipline. In fact, my ideal mentors, quite frankly, have not been marketing professionals. They've been people who I've seen as being great leaders who can navigate and articulate a great story and encourage people to come along to their vision and deliver even better than they could do it themselves. So I wouldn't necessarily say you need a marketing mentor per se. It's probably more at your point in time, what is your biggest need? And find someone who you think you can have good conversations about how they've done that and how you would therefore be able to mirror some of that. Do you think you need a second degree such an MBA to enter the digital marketing space if your bachelor's degree doesn't directly translate across? Um, simple answer, and this is going to go counter to the fact that I actually lecture an MBA, um, I'd say no. Uh, MBA was great for someone like myself who had done an engineering degree, electrical engineering, so obviously steeped in the technology, but did not necessarily have the good understanding or the vernacular for business. So what's the profit and loss? How, how do you do it? What's the assets uh, arrangements? Um, what's the organisational behaviour issues? And, and absolutely also marketing, actually, to get the marketing skills through my MBA. Would an MBA give you deep digital marketing skills? No. And quite frankly, even someone who is lecturing in the MBA, the biggest challenge is to keep the MBA course up to date with the latest and greatest. Um, but certainly no one comes away with the ability to go in and create a campaign in Facebook or set up a programmatic buy or make sure their website's ready for SEO. So I would suggest, I, I will you know, say you do need to constantly give yourself exposure to courses that can help you. An MBA is not necessarily going to be good at digital, digital marketing. What it's going to give you is a more holistic organisational perspective, which has its place if that's, what, if that's what you're ready for. But doing courses like this, doing the ADMA courses, and quite frankly, just getting on the tools and seeing along some, so, side someone who's actually doing it is where a real a lot of the insights will come from. And is that it? Any more questions? You can ask me about typing. No? All good? So congratulations, guys. Good job coming today. I think it's a really, really um, important investment of your time. The kind of skills that you'll get exposed to today are really, really valuable to you. Um, all my ask would be, know that you've got to continue to evolve, continue to do courses like this, and continue to be constantly curious. Thanks a lot.